What if you could just throw on a wearable brain device like this and then just close your eyes and send your thoughts to the computer while imagining some amazing artwork like a fiery dragon and then open your eyes up and just see that picture manifested on the screen in front of you. Over the past month, my developer Tyler and I have developed a program that allows you to send your thoughts from this device to ChatGPT OpenAI so that it can draw out pictures from your thought commands. In this video, we'll take you through the process of how we linked the Neurosity Crown Brain device to ChatGPT and even provide instructions and usable code for you to download for those of you who want to try it for yourselves. Some of this started last year when the popular YouTuber Fireship showed how he connected the Neurosity Crown Brainwave device to ChatGPT through JavaScript code and entered commands to the AI from his mind. The video got over 1.3 million views and the response was a mixture of excitement, amazement, and fear. I really enjoyed his video but felt that it had a weak finish because he didn't do a full demonstration of the thought commands and he didn't really talk much about what it was actually like to train these algorithms with his mind and how accurate the commands can actually get. In this video, we'll talk about the current capabilities and limitations of this technology, as well as how accurate this tech could actually get in the very near future. But first, let's take a look at the Neurosity Crown device. This is the Neurosity Crown. It has eight sensors that go on your scalp to detect electrical signals coming from your brain. It actually has an onboard computer that helps with the brainwave analysis and helps stream that data via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to your devices for further use. I do like the location of these sensors because they're pretty close to the visual and motor systems of the brain that are good for training the AI to recognize certain visualizations that you can do in your mind that the device and the software will pick up. Here we see the Neurosity console cloud platform where you can see your brain waves and do algorithm training. Here's the quality of the connection between the sensors and my scalp. These are my brain waves streaming over Wi-Fi in real time. But what we're most interested in today is this machine learning capability that they call Kinesis Training. You can pick from the drop-down menu a bunch of different commands to train. You can visualize doing jumping jacks, biting into a lemon, or a bunch of different commands to train the software specifically to recognize different states in your brain. Then you can go back to the home screen and try to visualize the command that you trained and see that metric prediction score reflect what the software where it sees as the probability that you are doing that command at that time. Now what's really cool about Neurosity is they have a super well organized software development kit with instructions on how to use it. My developer Tyler and I were really blown away by the amount of organization and he would know because he's the software development expert and he's worked with different systems like the Muse headband and now with the Neurosity SDK. Here's his thoughts if you're just getting into software development and want to build something with Neurosity. So if you're a beginner, I think Neurosity is a great way to start. It uses JavaScript, which is a simple language and has great um, simplifications for just getting going. So there's way less code they have to write to actually get something functioning. Um, use on the other hand, you have to interface directly with the device and use harder to use languages. So that would be for a most more seasoned developer to jump into. Now to build the interaction between the Neurosity Crown and ChatGPT, Tyler had me download a free code editor program called Visual Studio Code and another program called Node that allows you to run JavaScript code on your computer. He was then able to install the software development kit to Visual Studio Code by pulling it from a database called NPM, where the founders of Neurosity have already uploaded their SDK code for you to have access to. Finally, we custom wrote some code that allows your Kinesis commands to be exported to your OpenAI ChatGPT account in order to prompt it into pictures or whatever else you would like it to do. Now, what's great about this is that Tyler took all this code that we're using in this video right now and uploaded it to GitHub with instructions on how to use it. So you at home can actually download this code right now and start using it on your own computer. It should be relatively straightforward for a seasoned developer, but if you're just getting started and you need some guidance, Tyler's also open to some consultations if you need some extra help getting started or want more guidance on how to build out one of these projects. Now let's talk about what it was actually like to use this software. All right, now for some real talk. As probably a lot of you have guessed, the software is not going to be able to draw out exactly what you imagine it to at this point. We are a ways off from that, but I think that what we can do now is a fantastic building block towards a bright future of where we'll able to project whatever we want onto the screen with our thoughts. 
And I think that there are three main points that I experienced when going through this Neurosity training that illustrate where the technology is at right now. So number one, this device is picking up brainwave signals from your scalp. Those signals are very small and subject to a lot of noise in the environment and contamination of the signal. So to stand out from that noise, the signal is going to have to be pretty robust for the software to pick up the changes. That's why a lot of the Kinesis trainings in the dropdown menu on the Neurosity console are these big visualized movements like jumping jacks or other things that cause somewhat dramatic central nervous system changes like imagining when you bite into a lemon. There's a visceral response to that, so it's going to cause higher spikes in your brain waves. Unfortunately, the brainwave signal differences between imagining a cat and a dragon, for example, are going to be too small for this setup to pick up and differentiate between at this point. But as we'll cover later, there are technologies right now that exist and are being developed that can pick up those nuances. But for now, the Neurosity Crown is about as good as we can get on the consumer level, so we're limited to having the device recognize one of the imagined movements already there in the drop-down menu to trigger a chat GPT prompt described in the code. In this video, I trained the Kinesis to fire when I thought of pinching a dragon's face with my left hand to fire the dragon image. I know that's a bit of a stretch, but it illustrates where this tech is at right now on the consumer side. Keep in mind that you could change the prompts to anything you want to include drawing different pictures, having positive reinforcement read back to you, or even asking ChatGPT to write a resignation letter to your boss. Number two is the fact that your baseline is constantly changing in EEG brainwaves. So I did find that if I trained the Kinesis one day, it might not work very well the next day. Often I would put on the Neurosity Crown and then go back to my previous trainings and have them either sit at zero probability or rev way up into the 90s without me doing much. In the code, we put the probabilities quite high in the 90s to avoid false firings of the code, and I tended to have to retrain my Kinesis commands if I was using them on that day. Basically, the JavaScript is just sitting there waiting for the Kinesis threshold to be reached before sending the commands to ChatGPT. So sometimes if I didn't retrain the Kinesis, it would fire without me even doing much. And the third point is illustrative of that differentiation. If I've got three Kinesis commands going at once, the holy grail of training would be able to differentiate between those three with how you train the Kinesis. For instance, if I have a left hand pinch Kinesis and a jumping jacks Kinesis, they might both fire if I imagine pinching my left hand. As you can imagine, there's a lot of motor circuitry with that visualization, so it might fire off both Kinesis commands. So a lot of this is actually training your mind to do different commands differently so that the software can pick out and differentiate between the two or three. And then when you do the actual Kinesis training, you realize how hard that is to do. Sometimes I felt like the Kinesis was going too fast, so it's like you visualize when you're supposed to, and you're supposed to calm down during the relaxation phase, but that sometimes goes too quickly and you don't feel like your brain settles down when you're supposed to be relaxing. And then to fire off another visualization like biting into a lemon and getting that spike is kind of challenging to do 30 times in a row. Another example is how exactly do you do this? If I'm doing left hand pinch, how far do I imagine my fingers going? Are they opening and closing quickly or slowly? Am I pressing them together? Just going through that process, I realized how many nuances and variables there are there. And so this is all stuff that we're gonna have to figure out. What are the best movements for machine learning to actually be able to differentiate between commands? So there's a lot to think about and explore what might actually be the best building blocks once we get better and better technology, both in the hardware and in the AI machine learning analytics. Now, I do think within a couple of years, we'll get to the point of being able to project more aspects like specific animals, shapes, colors, moods, and all kinds of attributes to mind art generated by our minds through neurotechnology and into AI to create fantastic artwork that we can see in our mind's eye projected to the screen. And I do think that people with training will actually get very good at being able to project almost exactly what they're visualizing onto a computer or augmented reality screen. My friends with the Obvious Group through the University of Paris are actually doing this right now with MRI machines, and they're able to differentiate between things like imagining portrait versus landscape and moods of the painting. In fact, if they're shown an image, the MRI can pretty much exactly recreate what they've seen to a T. My friend Pierre, who's done most of these studies and has done over 100 hours of MRI training, said that it's actually a skill set to be able to visualize well enough to have the computer recreate what's in your mind's eye. So this is a skill set that people are 
we're training right now and we can be a part of it from our own bedrooms. And the tech to be able to do it at a super high level already exists, except it's an MRI machine that costs $3 million and is the size of half of a room. But if you look at the evolution of computers themselves, they used to take up a whole room and now everyone carries one around in their pocket that's a thousand times more powerful than what we had 50 years ago. So we will get there and there's tech right now like laser-based blood flow tracking FNIRs and ultrasound combinations that could pack what an MRI machine can do now into the size of something like this that we could wear on our heads. And AI is only going to get better at parsing out those signals from the noise and we'll have better hardware for it to work with in the near future as well. That way the AI can get a better differentiation of the nuances really required to project exactly what we're seeing in our mind's eye onto a computer screen. Still, I think that Neurosity is still an amazing setup to start creating the building blocks for this and to be an early adopter of this type of technology. And there's so many cool things that you could do with a program like this interfacing with ChatGPT. You could have commands for controlling a robot or other devices like telling a machine to make your coffee or guitar pedals. These are all projects that have been done already and they're only getting easier with things like being able to interact with ChatGPT through simple JavaScript code using their API. So if you want to be an early adopter of this technology, be sure to check out the code below and the link provided for consultations with Tyler if you want to get your own project started. These devices are truly getting more powerful every day and it's really interesting to see how the mainstream media is reacting to it. Colorado just passed a new law to protect people's brain data, which I think is a really important step as this data becomes more and more powerful. And if you want to see my reaction to a CBS news special on that very topic, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.